Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, just wanted to share with you some strawberry updates from our trials and um, this year. So let's see if I can advance my slide here. So first of all, I want to talk about the uh, current variety trial performance in here in central Alabama. And next I'll talk about the overall performance over the last five years since I've been doing these trials. Uh, and also uh, we'll talk about some tips on preparations for next season. Uh, many of you strawberry growers know that uh, preparations have uh, really already begun. Uh, we'll talk, I'll be touching on some of those, uh, some of those activities. And um, I'll finish up with um, some varieties to watch. Um, I say varieties, it's actually just one, um, we'll, we'll, but I'll be talking about that. A varieties to watch other than the ones that I'm presenting uh, here today. Uh, I mentioned last in our uh, last uh, presentation, uh, talked about how there is an increased interest in strawberry production and strawberry consumption. Uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the desire to consume fresh grown uh, strawberries uh, just continues to increase uh, throughout the state and actually throughout the, the region and the country, primarily because, well, for flavor, uh, but also for the health uh, benefits that, um, uh, that, are, that are afforded by the strawberry. But uh, growers are, are, they are having a bit of a time growing them. They, they can. Um, this year, you may not know it um, among some of the growers. Uh, this was a pretty good year this year. Uh, but it is uh, they're known to be too difficult to grow often, and they, they, it is an expensive startup, and uh, it's essentially a gamble. You really, oftentimes you don't you're not really sure what you're going to get, and so, um, uh, so this is uh, so variety trials are uh, are paramount really when we when we try to think about some of the things. Um, that we could do to uh, to assist growers, and that's just conducting variety trials because variety trials are uh, the uh, first line of defense when it comes to um, in, in, improving um, variety uh, strawberry production or the production of any crop. Um, so first of all, I'll start with the current variety performance, and again, this is here in central Alabama, and these are the varieties. Uh, these aren't all of the varieties that I've trialed over the years, but these are the ones that have essentially made the cut uh, over the years. So uh, Albion is the only day neutral that variety that I'll be talking about. Camarosa, I have that in red here, and that's because it is the market standard. Uh, also a, an up and coming variety, uh, Camino Real. Chandler, I have that in bold print here because that used to be the market standard, but it was sort of edged out by Camarosa. And also Ruby June, uh, it's a variety that is another variety that is growing in popularity. And this, so we'll start with total marketable yield. And this is the, the total marketable yield is the, the marketable yield across the entire season. And you can see that uh, uh, Camino Real and Chandler are, are, are the two most comparable to Camarosa in this trial of this, for this year in 2021. And uh, Ruby June and Albion uh, are just uh, lagging a little bit behind here in this season. Uh, Ruby June has performed uh, more comparable to Camarosa, I'd say, over the, some of the years. And actually, Ruby June and Albion are two of the most, uh, two of the best tasting varieties that we, we've trialed. So there's and people from all over, growers from all over, get comments from uh, from consumers. They tell them that Ruby June is a uh, it's a really great tasting variety. So next we'll look at the individual berry weight, another important component or a characteristic of a berry. And we can see that uh, this year in in 2021 uh, that uh, Albion and Ruby June were the two largest berries and. Uh, a little bit a bit larger than Camarosa. Uh, Camino Real is noted uh, to have a very large berry. Uh, we, we did see that this year, but, but um, in the field, but I think what we might have seen is just uh, more, it, it probably has more of a uniform berry size. 
um, because I, I really expect it to be a, a little bit larger than it, than it did after um, it shook out of the end. Another component that uh, we want to look at is, is the actual plant size. And Camarosa is known to have a, a large plant. Um, also Chandler is as well. Uh, Ruby June, as we can see, has a large plant. But uh, one thing that I've noticed about it is that it has, it, it has a tendency to produce these really large leaves. And so and I think that may be one of the, the things that uh, adds to the uh, to the size and makes it a little bit more comparable to Chandler and Camarosa. And we can see Camino Real was a bit uh, compact in our, uh, produced some compact plants in our trials this year. And it was well below the, the average. Also number of runners or stolons. Uh, this is a, a, a benefit if you have a, if a, you have a cultivar that has large runner, a large number of runners, this could be a benefit if you were in uh, matted row production where the, uh, where the uh, continued production of the planting uh, is driven by uh, runners and the, and the production of daughter plants. Uh, the, the matted row system though, as you know, has been replaced by the, uh, the uh, uh, annual hill plastic culture system, which is, as the name suggests, it is a, a annual system. The matted row is a more of a uh, perennial system that lasts about uh, five, five to six years, or as long as five to six years. And so that um, it's a little bit more permanent and um, it is driven, as I said, by the production of uh, runner plants. So in an annual hill plastic culture system, that uh, the ability to produce high numbers of runners is not necessarily a benefit, but more of a detriment. Uh, and in the case, if you are producing plants, uh, the uh, a variety that produces a high number of uh, runners uh, and daughter plants, uh, that that would also be a benefit. But as we can see, that uh, Camino Real and Ruby June, this is the we have got less than a less than a runner on each one of these, less than a runner per plant. Um, I've seen some years that, uh, that have been higher than this, and it really depends on, I think it really depends on the time of the year or the time of the season that they're, uh, this is being sampled. So now let's look at the five-year average for a variety performance, again, in central Alabama. And we'll start off again with marketable yield, and this is the uh, average five-year average of marketable yields. As you can see, Camarosa, Camarosa is still the number one cultivar, followed by Camino Real and Ruby June. So Ruby June uh, overall is, uh, does, uh, do some, does produce a, a, a marketable yield that is a bit more comparable to Camarosa. And uh, both of these, Camino Real and Ruby June are growing in popularity. Um, and again, Ruby June does have a really good, a really great flavor. And uh, this is total production. And in total production, we it's, it's a combination of marketable yield and cold fruit. So we're looking at the entire production of the entire fruit production of the variety. And, and as you can see, it's following a similar trend here. Now we'll look at cold fruit production, and this is a this is an important uh, variety, uh, an important uh, uh, trait to follow because uh, having to pick out cold fruit when you're when you're producing uh, this is this really an issue with uh, some some growers. Uh, there, this is not really their the, it's not really the uh, best thing that they not the most exciting thing that they would like to like to do in producing uh, having to cull out fruit, pick out the, uh, the cold fruit in their, in their, in production. We can see that Ruby June is among the lowest cold fruit produ uh, producers as well as Camino Real. Um, so that uh, could be a, a really good benefit for the, for these two varieties and make them um, even more popular. Uh, this year, uh, some variety, some growers had to produce Camino Real, had to grow Camino Real because there was a shortage of Camarosa. And they were really pleased with it, with the outcome. And they got a lot of comments, compliments from 
uh, consumers. So uh, I know of at least a couple of, of operations that are going again uh, with Camino Real by choice this year because of, they had such a great year last year. Now soluble solids, and this is one of the components of taste, as you can see. And as I mentioned, uh, Ruby June and Albion were two, two of the most uh, uh, tasty, or the, the two most tasty berries in the entire uh, trial over the years. And we see Ruby June is comparable to Chandler and Camarosa in terms of soluble solids. Uh, Albion is a, is a bit, uh, uh, a little bit deficient here in soluble solids, or a little bit lower than um, some of the others. And um, that just goes to show that uh, sweetness isn't the only component of flavor. There are some flavor volatiles that, uh, that come into play when we're talking about uh, flavor, overall flavor of the berry. And both the Ruby June and Avion uh, certainly have those uh, uh, to their benefit. And we can see Camino Real is the, uh, produced the lowest number of soluble solids or, or sugars. Um, and that has been a comment that uh, a lot of growers have had about Camino Real, and it's one reason why uh, people won't, uh, some people won't plant it um, because of the sugars. It's known to have uh, a low soluble solids count and uh, low flavor, but uh, that wasn't the case this year. And what we're finding is that is that is if uh, Camino Real can be harvested early, uh, later and allowed to turn dark. A dark red, and that is its. Uh, uh, that is what it was bred to do: is being uh, picked when it is really red. Uh, that's when the uh, flavor is at its highest. In this, in this case, now overall, there, uh, there's not the, the correlation uh, between flavor and the deep redness that uh, one might think, uh, at least according to the literature. But in some cases, like uh, in the case of Camino Real, if it is allowed to stay on the plant uh, when it is uh, a deep red, that is the best time to, to harvest it. Okay, so we're gonna, next we're looking at individual fruit weight for the berries. And again, uh, Albion and Camino Real were the two largest, of, what, along with Ruby June. Uh, they were the largest berries and they were uh, a gram, <laughs> a gram uh, heavier than uh, Camarosa. Okay, so this brings us to preparations for next season. And I just uh, created a table here, some of the, the, the main activities during a, this, the uh, preparation. And this is not etched in stone. Uh, this is in its, and a lot of this is just going to really depend on the operation and what the operation is able to do. And, uh, and I have here uh, some of the uh, highlights, though. Uh, um, ordering plants. And I think this is really important. You want to be sure to order the plants. Uh, you want to uh, select a, a, uh, a nursery um, to order your plants. And you want to find out when, when they uh, offer their plants for sale. And that's somewhere between June and, uh, and July. And so as soon as those plants are available, you should uh, go ahead and place your order. And a lot of the uh, operations and, and maybe all of the operations um, uh, require a certain amount of uh, a certain amount of the charge up front. And also be sure to soil test well in advance because if you need a uh, if you have a a lime requirement uh, if you're, if you're, or if your pH is, is low, then you're going to need to um, add lime to the soil to raise the pH and that's going to require uh, several weeks or months to and for that uh, reaction to take place to raise the pH, your soil pH. So you want to be sure to have this done uh, in plenty of time ahead of planning. Now, planning um, uh, is going to depend on the time, the, your location in the state. And I have here anywhere from late September to mid October. Uh, so the, north, the northern locations in the state and central locations in the state, uh, you want to plant, and even, even the southerns, uh, you want to plant early October. Uh, you, you know, some of the northern locations, you may be able to get away with planting a little bit earlier, the late September. Uh, but you definitely want to be, you want to plant for uh, by mid-October. Uh, planting date, a, a number of operations, they will 
uh, plant and they'll put the row cover down. They may plant a little bit late and they'll put the row cover down in order to stimulate some more growth, to build up heat units and stimulate some more growth before the winter temperatures set in. Uh, and this is a, and this does work, uh, but it doesn't work like planning on time. You, you, uh, you, there's just really no, nothing, nothing beats planning it on time right now. And uh, also, if you put down pre-emergent pre herbicides, you want to uh, uh, do that at bed formation and, and prior to um, laying of your plastic and installation of your uh, your rope, your uh, drip tape. And also, uh, seed your uh, you want to put down your um, your ryegrass seed uh, to prevent. Or the erosion and some of the uh, the soil from coming up from the, away from the sides of your of your plastic, so that the plastic can be ripped up easily by winds, and so that that could be a, a pretty devastating uh, thing to happen. High winds come through and they just rip up all of your plastic from your your planting beds. Um, so uh, you, you do want to plant some rope, uh, ryegrass to to uh, keep the plastic down and prevent erosion. Uh, but you want to do this before uh, you punch holes for planting because you don't want to get any of the rye seed in the, in the planting holes. And you want to do all of these, these things, pre adding your pre-emergent herbicides, forming your bed, laying your plastic, applying your, uh, your, your ryegrass seed. Uh, you want to do that uh, about uh, three to four weeks prior to planting. Um, to allow to be able so that you can allow uh, uh, so the pre-plant herbicides and other uh, components may not harm your plants when you plant them. Okay, and we have here a, a source. I've got sources of, uh, of plant materials for plug plants. Some of these producers also produce uh, uh, bare root plants. And so and some may only produce bare root plants. And, and, that, and that also may depend on the time of the year, um, whether or not they plant plug or, uh, or, uh, or bare root plants. And uh, most, I know a lot of us uh, got our varieties from, uh, from uh, Jimmy Witt. Um, and unfortunately, uh, Jimmy Witt passed away uh, this year, uh, 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 last year and so a lot of us, it's sort of left a void in, how, in the places where we can get plants. And so here's a list of plant material, uh, a list of uh, producers of plants, some here in Alabama and a lot of uh, producers out of state. Okay, so these, these are some things to remember. Um, Plant, uh, you want bare plug plants or bare root plants when you place your order. And it, this picture here is a bare root plant. And when you get your bare root plants, you want to make sure that they're uh, nice, healthy roots uh, and make sure that you're getting from a, uh, a reputable uh, nursery. They're oftentimes they have a minimum order. And as I mentioned earlier, that uh, you're maybe required to pay up front. And also, as I mentioned earlier, do not delay in planting if you can all if you can at all help it. Um, place it as soon as uh, as you can, as soon as the nursery offers plants for for sale. And again, I have varieties to watch, uh, and I have varieties listed, but it's really just a single variety, and that is Fronteras. Uh, Fronteras is a produces a very large berry. Uh, it uh, had an average berry size of about 32 grams. Uh, this is a variety that is produced. Uh, among uh, from California, uh, this yield doesn't really seem that high here. But um, in the uh, in the season that it was produced, it, this was the highest yield, yielder. It has a maturity that's a, that's a little later than Camarosa, and a, and obviously has a larger berry size. And uh, the flavors, it's pretty good. It's a pretty good flavor. Uh, it is sweet and uh, a little bit tart. And I have here the, the red color seems a little bit fluorescent in in person. It sort of does, you know, for the lack of a better word, that it sort of did have a sort of a fluorescent red color. Just a really, uh, really attractive, large conical shaped berry. 
So again, some points to remember from all of this. Uh, Camino Real and Ruby June were the most comparable to Camarosa. Uh, Camarosa and, and Camino, well, Camino Real and Ruby June produced large berries and uh, few runners. Camino Real produces a, a more compact plant. Again, order on time. Be sure to test early and, um, and have, make sure you have timely bed preparation and timely planting. And so that's the end of my presentation. I'll take any questions.